Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, how you how you got to adjust your time for the reader? <laughs> That's what I told him. I already told him. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I thought it caught my eye because I thought she was saying like the timing was off or the mic or something like that. <laughs> That's funny. Where was I at? But that said, peace of the saints yeah. that, are, that that are not in the room. Yeah. Peace of the saints that that uh couldn't make it to the saints that uh, are watching in and listening in. But no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where we leave off last week, and while we do this, I'm about to try to adjust your audio just a little bit here. Hopefully, I don't make a mess of nothing. Out of filter, tell you how to bring me that bottle of water. It's a bottle of water in the fridge. Tell you how to bring it. Well, tell them to bring me some water. Have them bring me some water. Where we leave out? We was on Second Kings twelve twenty one was the last last one in the narrate narrative we was reading. All right, we was on Second Kings twelve twenty one. Mm. Recap us. Do me a favor and recap what we was for me. Joash, you know my man Joash was uh he was uh raised by the priests because his grandma Athaliah killed all the siblings and Jehoiada the priest kind of um took him in and raised him and uh when he got older he was uh oh, he told to tell Eli to me. I know but he's all wrapped up in the bed. and uh Jehoiada the priest Jehoiada the priest raised him and he uh you know when he got when he became king you know, he repaired some of the breaches in the temple, took care of the took care of the house of the Lord. You know what I'm saying? He tried his little he tried a little bit to restore some things for Yahuwah, but uh it gets more into his life in Chronicles, I know. So let's pick up right from there. Let's let's pick up a little bit of, uh, of the life of Joe Ash, because a couple of things we remember about Joe Ash is he was a he was a baby, right? Remember he started at a young age, about seven years old, he started to be king. And he was raised by the priest. Um, and we could see that early on in his life, when he became an adult, he took on some of the passions of the priest. So one of the first things he did is he wanted to clean up that temple. Right. And we kind of imagined, you know, said the book ain't, ain't necessarily explicit, but we kind of imagined that, you know, he would adopt some of that because he was raised by Jehoiada. And Jehoiada likely is complaining to him and telling him about all the issues and him being king. Now he has the resources and power to make those type of decisions. And so um, for years, he had, he had been trying to get the priest to clean up the temple. And then eventually he, he uh, made it happen. But that, that was kind of like the beginning of his life. And like Brother T said, in Chronicles, we can go into a little bit more. So let's do that. Let's go into, um, let's go to Second Chronicles chapter 24. A lot of this is overlap, but let's jump down to about verse 14. Second Chronicles chapter 24, verse 14. And when they had finished it, they brought the rest of the money before the king and Jehoiada. Where uh, when they say finished it, they talking about uh they talking about the uh they talking about the temple. So the uh Whereof were made vessels for the house of the Lord, even vessels to minister, 
and to offer withal all in spoons and vessels of glad, gold and silver. And they offered burnt offerings in the house of Yahuwah continually all the days of Jehoiada. But Jehoiada waxed old and was full of days when he died. And 130 mm -hmm. years old was he when he died. And they burned. All right, so the Most High God let, let uh, Jehoiada last for 130 years. And again, we can speculate and we can imagine because, you know, sometimes I like doing that when we look. For me, it helps me understand the scripture when I can kind of imagine why things are happening. Right. So it's like, why might the Most High God let Jehoiada live to 130? Why might that be important to let him live that long? Yeah, they had to get that, had to repair some of the things at the temple. I don't know. Athaliah had messed up the land a lot with a lot of uh, idol worship. He had to, yeah, he had to give him space. The Ray, remember, Jehoiada was the high priest. He probably already an old man, right? But then now you got this baby that come along. So now you got like, all right, let me give you a little space to let to raise this darn boy. You know what I'm saying? Like, I need you, you know what I'm saying? We just got to keep this thing solid just for a little while, right? So you have to look at Jehoiada, 130 years old. Then he dies, right? And that was like a father to Joash. So now we got to look at Joash and see how does his death affect him, right? Let's look at it. And they buried him in the city of David among the kings because he had done good in Israel, both, both toward God and towards his house. Now, after the death of Jehoiada came the princes of Judah and made obeisance to the king. Then the king hearkened unto them. And they left the house of Yahuwah God of their fathers and served groves and idols. And wrath came upon Judah and Jerusalem for this, their trespass. Yet he mm -hmm. sent prophets to them to bring them again unto Yahuwah. And they testified against them, but they would not give ear. And the spirit of God came upon Zechariah, the son of Jehoiada, the priest, which stood above the people and said unto them, Thus says God, why transgress ye the commandments of Yahuwah, that ye cannot prosper? Because you have forsaken Yahuwah. And has also forsaken, and he has also forsaken you. Now they conspired against him and stoned him with stones at the commandment of the king in the court of the house of Yahuwah. Thus Joash the king remembered not the kindness which Jehoiada his father had done unto him, but mm -hmm. slew his son. So you see, you see, Joash started to kind of get a lot more lax after Jehoiada died, right? And now he don't even remember how Jehoiada. You know what I'm saying? He don't even remember how he raised him. And when the books say that, it's not necessarily that, you know, he doesn't have memories of Jehoiada. It's saying that he acting like, you know what I'm saying? Like his behavior is as, is as if Jehoiada wasn't kind to him. You know what I'm saying? Like he, he's not keeping in memory how kind Jehoiada was to him and considering that in the way that he chooses to behave. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's, it's like when we be accusing people of acting brand new. You know what I'm saying? are not appreciating us or are not doing the things that we would have done for them. And so that's kind of what, what Joash is doing right now. But watch what happened to Jehoiada's son. And they conspired against him and stoned him with stones at the commandment of the king and the court of the house of Yehuah. Thus Joash the king remembered not the kindness which Jehoiada his father had done to him, but slew his son. And when he died, he said, Yehuah look upon it and require it. All right, so now he killed Jehoiada's son. All right, keep going. And it came to pass at the end of the year that the host of Syria came up against him. And they came to Judah and Jerusalem and destroyed all the princes of the people from among the people and sent the spoil of them unto the king of Damascus. For the army of the Syrians came with a small company of men and Yahuwah delivered a very great host into their hand because they had forsaken Yahuwah God of their fathers. So they executed judgment against Joash. And when they were departed from him, for they left him in the great diseases, his own servants conspired against him for the blood of the sons of Jehoiada the priest and slew him on his bed, and he died. And they buried him in the city of David, but they buried him not in the sepulchres of the kings. And these are they that conspired against him. Zabad, the son of Shemeth, uh, and Ammonitus, and Jehozabad, the son of Shemrith, a Moabitess. Now, concerning his son, and the greatness of the burdens laid upon him and the repairing of the house of God, behold, they are written in the story of the book of the Kings and Amaziah, his son reigned in his stead. Right. So after Joash, you get Amaziah, 
But let me put this on the screen so we can take a look at it. All right, give me a second here. Let me get my little red pointer. Boom. All right, and let me put it on the big screen. Everybody can see it. All right, so right here, we had Joe Ash. Joe Ash, the prophet at the time, is Elisha. And then we can see for some of Joe Ash's lifetime is Jehu. Y'all remember Jehu. So we're going to kind of jump back over and kind of figure out what happens after Jehu in a second. But now Amaziah is the son of Joash. So technically what we read is right over here. But notice that we got to pass up two kings, right? So we pass up. We already talked about Jehu a little bit. But then we pack, pass up Jehoahaz and Jehoash, right? So notice that all the names are very similar because really we're dealing with blended families here. Athaliah is the daughter of Ahab, right? Athaliah, Ahab's daughter, marries Ahaziah, right? Ahaziah, Ahaziah's brother-in-law is Joram and Ahaziah, who is Ahab's son, right? Both of those are Ahab's son, right? So that's a blended family. They all kind of together. And you can see that they just start naming um, their children the same names. Well, then Jehu comes, and then he begins to use similar names as well. Jehoahaz and Jehoash is his, uh, that's how his family starts to name their names. So we're going to read a little bit about them before we move on to Amaziah. So let's jump over to 2 Kings chapter 13. This is 2 Kings chapter 13. We're going to start at verse 1. In the three and twentieth year of Joash, the son of Ahaziah, king of Judah, Jehoahaz, the son of Jehu, began to reign over Israel and Samaria and reigned 17 years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of Yahuwah and followed the sins mm -hmm. of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, which made Israel to sin. He departed not from there. He departed not therefrom. And the anger of Yahuwah was kindled against Israel and he delivered them into the hand of Hazael, Hazael, king of Syria, and into the hand right. of ben Hadad, the son of Hazael, all their days. So now, if you look at who, who came after Joash, after uh, he kind of went the wrong direction and after Jehoiada died, it was the king of Syria, right? And now we've kind of kind of rewinded a little bit. We went back because we had to talk about the kings of Israel. So we rewinded a little bit. And who's after them? The king of Syria. So if y'all remember, the king of Syria really has been being a thorn in our side. Both houses of Israel, but mainly the house, I mean, uh, both, ha both houses of, of the land of Israel, but ma mainly the kingdom of Israel, the northern kingdom. You know what I'm saying? They've been a thorn on our side since Amri, really. Right. And it's kind of it's kind of just continuing. So the the Syrians are not going away. Right. Let's keep reading. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. And he delivered them into the hand of Hazael, king of Syria, and into the hand of Ben-Hadad, the son of Hazael, all their days. And Jehoahaz besought Yahuwah, and Yahuwah hearkened unto him, for he saw the oppression of Israel, because the king of Syria oppressed him. And Yahuwah gave Israel a savior, so that they went out from under the hand of the Syrians. And the children of Israel dwelt in their tents as before time. Nevertheless, they departed not from the sins of the house of Jeroboam, who made Israel to sin, but walked therein. And there remained the grove also in Samaria. Neither did he leave of the people of Jehoahaz, but 50 horsemen and 10 chariots and 10,000 footmen. For the king of Syria had destroyed them and had made them like the dust by threshing. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoahaz and all that he did and the might and his might, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel? And Jehoahaz mm -hmm. slept with his fathers and they buried him in Samaria and Joash, his son, reigned in his stead. Right. So that's the first king of Israel that, that we skipped over. Uh, Jehoahaz. And now we're about to uh, look at Jehoash. Right. So let's look at let's look at his life. In the 30th, in the 30 and 7th year of Joash, king of Judah, began Jehoash, the son of Jehoahaz, to reign over Israel and Samaria. And he reigned 16 years. 
And he did that right, with so me. This is why I got it on the screen. You know what I'm saying? You look at the screen, I think it's hard to get because there's all these names that send me. They'd be like, okay, Joash, the king of Judah, the son of Jehoahash, and his son name is Jehoash. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's, it almost sounds like the same name. I remember the first time that I read this, I'm like, I don't know who I'm reading about at this point. But when you start to kind of put it all together, and uh, you know, if, at some point, maybe my third time reading the book, I had to, I had to kind of write it down and kind of like, you know, visualize it for myself. Um, so that's why I kind of like putting the images up so y'all can kind of figure out who we talking about, what time period, and kind of see who, who, who else are, are the kings at that time. But let's keep going. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel sin. But he walked therein. And the rest of the acts of Joash and all that he did and his might wherewith he fought against Amaziah, king of Judah, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel? And, jo and Joash slept with his fathers and, Jero and Jeroboam sat upon his throne. And Joash right. was buried in Samaria with the kings of Israel. So now we're told that Jehoash actually fought with Amaziah. So we just got done being introduced a little bit to Amaziah because Amaziah is the son of Joash, who was the king of Judah, the son of um, the son of uh, uh, Am uh, Ahaziah. You know what I'm saying? He was the baby. He was the one that was seven years old and ended up dueling and being raised by Jehoiada. And after Jehoiada died, then, you know what I'm saying, he ended up uh, killing Jehoiada's son being conquered by the Syrians, and then the people, you know what I'm saying, the people kind of turned on him a bit, and then he died. You know what I'm saying? So now we look at his son, Joash's son, Amaziah, and that's the, uh, the same person that Jehoash was fighting with from the king of Israel. So they fought against each other. So now let's see if we can pick up a little bit about Amaziah and try to understand a little bit about his life. We're going to go to Chronicles chapter 25. This is Chronicles chapter 25. Second Chronicles? Yeah, Second Chronicles chapter 25. Verse 1. Uh, Sister Sharon, the broken ribbon. So hold on, let me pull it up real quick. Give me a second. The uh, broken ribbon. Hold on, let me make sure y'all can hear Brother T when I pull up this video. Um, add it. There we go. Say something, Brother T. Uh, testing. Perfect. All right. I'm gonna take him off of the screen though. All right. So, the broken ribbon right here. Oh, let me put it on here so you can see it. The broken river right here in the middle is just like a, a folding spot. So this is meant to be like a little flyer where people can print it out. Uh, and this broken ribbon is just a separation so you can fold it. Then, but um, that's all. It don't it don't it don't necessarily mean uh, mean anything. Like it's not calling out any particular event. You can look over here. This is when we gonna have some of these events where the kingdom of Israel is gonna be broken at this point. Um, but we'll, we'll kind of get into that later, but yeah, this, this has no real significance in terms of the history of the people. It's just somewhere where the page can be split and cut in half. Cause it's, it's made to be really big. Um, so I'm gonna lead this up just for a little bit. So y'all can kind of take a look at it. Uh, remember right here, right now, Joe Ash just died and then, Jo, uh, Jehoash just died and Joash just died. This is the king of Israel. This is the king of Judah. Now we're on Amaziah right here. And then the book introduced to us Jeroboam too. So remember the northern kingdom started with Jeroboam. And now this is a second king named Jeroboam. No relation to the first Jeroboam. They just share the same name. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and pick up uh, Amaziah. And Messiah was 25 years old when he began to reign. Mm -hmm. And he reigned 20 and nine years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jeho Jehodadon, Jehoadon of Jerusalem. And he did that which was right in the sight of Yahuwah, but not with a perfect heart. Mm -hmm. Now it came to pass when the kingdom was established to him 
that he slew his servants that had killed the king, his father. But he slew not their children, but did as it is written in the law of the book of Moses, where the Lord commanded, saying, The father shall not die for the children, neither shall the children die for the fathers, but every man shall die for his own sin. Okay. Moreover, Amaziah gathered Judah together and made them captains over thousands and captains over hundreds, according to the houses of their fathers throughout all Judah and Benjamin. And he numbered them from 20 years old and above, and found them 300,000 choice men able to go forth to war that could handle spear and shield. He hired He's also a bad a boy. He found him some bad boys that can go out there and get it done. You know what I'm saying? Let's look at it. It's Amaziah, right? So you, first of all, you got you to gotta, you gotta look at Amaziah and see what he's doing right now. He set the tone already. First thing he did, he came in. Book tell you, oh, he did what he'll give you. The book give you a nice little summary of the whole life at the beginning for him. Is that, listen, he did what God wanted but not with a perfect heart. So that means he made some mistakes along the way, right? But what did he do to set the tone? First thing he come in, he killed a boy that, uh, that uh, killed his father, right? Then after that, he left it at the people that, that committed the sin. A lot of these other times, when you look at the northern tribes, what do we see happen? The Most High God prophesied it, but you have to separate sometimes the prophecy or what God it says is going to be the punishment from the people who enact the punishment. Because a lot of times the people who enact the punishment ain't doing it because they think they're doing God's service. They're doing it just because they're sinners, right? So look at what happened with a lot of the kings at the northern tribe, right? Let's recap them a little bit, right? And I'm going to go to a different slide because I think it illustrated a bit better. So if you look at this slide, right, the northern kingdom, you got Jeroboam. He had a prophecy against him that him and everybody in his household is going to die. Then Nadab came. And then Baasha came, you remember? And he killed all of them, right? He didn't just kill Nadab. He killed Nadab's kids. He killed Nadab's cousins. He killed everybody that belonged to Nadab, right? And then the same thing kept happening because you have Baasha and then his son, Eli, right? And then who was it? It was Zimri. Zimri came and he killed all of them. The books say everybody that pisses against the wall. That means every male, right, killed them. That's important to see because that is how they enact their own judgment. Although the Most High God, he prophesied it, that's still not right for an individual to carry out. So then you got to carry that. Now, I say that just to bring it back to Amaziah. Amaziah handled it a little differently, right? Amaziah said, I'm not going to kill everybody. I'm just going to kill those who did the sin. Well, now that's justice. Now we talk, we're not talking about vengeance. We're not talking, we're only talking about justice at this point. And him as the king, he has the authority to enact that justice, right? So that's a good thing. The most high God, he sets the tone already by setting this thing off the way the most high God will want it, right? Let's keep reading and see how else he, he set the tone for the people. He hired also 100,000 mighty men of valor out of Israel for 100 talents of silver. Mm -hmm. There came a man of God to him, saying, O king, let not the army of Israel go with thee, for Yahuwah is not with Israel. To wit. Right? So now the Most High God come to him and give him a warning. Like, yo, 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 I see you building your army out, but don't go nowhere with the army of the northern tribes, the army of Israel. Right? And why might that be said? The Lord not with Israel. The Lord don't mess with Israel. You going to lose you rock with them boys. You remember Jehoshaphat? Right? There was Jehoshaphat. Y'all remember Jehoshaphat? He went up and he was best friends with King Ahab. And King Ahab was asking him, like, man, will you go to war with me? And Jehoshaphat was like, yeah, for sure. I'm with you. My people just like your people. But he's like, but first, let's hear from a prophet. Right? But he ended up going with Ahab anyway. And Ahab got killed. Most High God got mad with him. Jehoshaphat, that same Jehoshaphat, years later, ended up going to war with uh, Ahab's son. Right? So it's like, you look at these things, and ever since then, there's been this relationship with the kingdom of Israel. And you see a lot of the stuff that the kingdom of Israel was doing that the Most High God didn't like, it ended up spreading over to Judah. So Amaziah is now... Like it looked like he trying to clean stuff up just a little bit, right? 
because he came in, he exacted judgment the way it's supposed to be done. He didn't go overboard. He didn't take vengeance. Then after that, he started building up his army. So then a prophet come to him and give him a warning like, yo, 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 see what you're doing. You make sure you don't try to ride with them boys up north. Don't ride with the boy. You know what I'm saying? Don't ride. Don't ride with the kingdom of Israel. All right. Let's keep going. Let's see how you responded. O king, let not the army of Israel go with thee, for the Lord is not with Israel, to wit, with all the children of Ephraim. But if you will go, do it. Be strong for the battle. God shall make thee fall before the enemy. For God has power to help and to cast down. And Amaziah said to the man of God, But what shall we do for the hundred talents of silver I have given to the army of Israel? And the man mm -hmm. of God answered, who is able to give thee much more than this? The name is All right. So he's like, Amaziah looking like, well, hold on, hold on. I already paid these boys. You know what I'm saying? Like, you tell me not to go to war, but I already gave him, I already gave him, as the kids say, I already gave him the bag. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> what am I supposed to do? He's asking the question, like, well, hold on, hold on. Then the prophet had to let him know, now, nah, most high God can give you a lot more money than that. You know what I'm saying? Most high God said, I'm, I'm asking you to take a sacrifice right now. Don't worry about the cost of it. You know what I'm saying? I can take care of that part. I just need you to trust me. Let's see what happens. Then Amaziah separated them to wit the army that was come to him out of Ephraim to go home again. Wherefore, their anger was greatly kindled against Judah, and they returned home in great anger. Mm -hmm. And Amaziah strengthened himself and led forth his people and went to the Valley of Salt and smote of the children of Seir 10,000. Right? So the children of Seir is, is the children of who? Edom. Edom, right? So Seir is another you call uh, the land of Edom. You know what I'm saying? It was also called the land of Seir, Mount right? Seir. Or not necessarily called the land of Seir, but you know what I'm saying? The people of Seir. Mount Seir. Right? Edom. Correct. Right? And then uh, another name that they called is just plain old Esau. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's all the Edomites, right? That's all their territory. So they went down to Edom and they fought with the Edomites. And remember, let's put it on the map just so y'all kind of understand. This is not the first time that this has happened. And it's not going to be the last time because Edom, right, and Mount Seir are right here. Judah is right here. And we're talking about the southern kingdom. So Amaziah is king over this orange territory. So he right next door to Edom. So anytime Edom want to get a little bit more territory, he coming right here. So that means they constantly at, at odds because it's like Russia and Ukraine, right? They right next to each other. You know what I'm saying? So that's important to understand when we looking at uh, when when we looking at these interactions and looking at the wars that you know what I'm saying we constantly find ourselves in is because our next door neighbor neighbors just be getting a little strength and sometimes they want to you know extend their territory a little bit. Let's keep going. And other 10,000 left alive did the children of Judah carry away captive and brought them unto the top of the rock and cast them down from the top of the rock that they all were broken in pieces. But the soldiers of the army, which Amaziah sent back, that they should not go with him to battle, fell upon the cities of Judah from Samaria, even unto Beth Haran, and smote 3,000 of them and took much spoil. Now it came to pass after that Amaziah was come from the slaughter of the Edomites that he brought the gods of the children of Seir and set them up to be his gods and bowed down himself before them and burned incense unto them. Wherefore the angel. Right. So now we see that the Most High God, we remember when it first started off, it say, Amaziah, you know what I'm saying? He did some good stuff, but not with a perfect heart. So this is what it's talking about. His heart wasn't perfect towards God. So he went out and he got some he got some idols. But before we start to talk about that a little bit, it's something that I want to make sure we notice. When we was talking about King Jehoash, right? One of the things before it told us he died, it said that he went to war with who? With Syria? He went to war with King Amaziah. Oh, you know. So now we went back and now we're reading about King Amaziah. Why? We can kind of see why things, why friction started already. Amaziah hated the Israelites and was like, oh, we about to go to war. We about to fight the uh, Edomites. Right. So he said, let me pay some of the people from the northern tribes and we're going to go to war. Then after paying them, he got a prophet that came to him and was like, yo, 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 don't go to war with them. 
So then he go back to him after paying him, like, man, y'all keep the money. We good, though. We don't need y'all. And then we see the, the kingdom of Israel that was participating. They were looking like, what? And they stormed off mad. So that's where the friction start. Right? Everybody pretty much been buddy, buddy. But that's when the friction start. So now let's continue on. And we're going to see we're going to see what continues uh, with uh, Amaziah after he brought these idols back from e Edom. Now it came to pass after that Amaziah was come from the slaughter of the Edomites. But he brought the gods of the children of Seir and set them up to be his gods and bowed himself down before them and burned incense unto them. Wherefore, the mm -hmm. anger of the Lord was kindled against Amaziah, and he sent unto him a prophet, which said unto him, Why have you sought after the gods of the people which could not deliver their own people out of your hand? Out of right. Right. He said, that don't even make no sense. You just ran these people through and you did it in the name of Yahuwah. And then you're going to collect they gods. When you just whooped them out and they guys clearly couldn't even protect them. They said, there, what sense does that darn make? Right? That makes just about as much sense as people hanging darn dream catchers in their darn window and outside their darn house. Knowing that, knowing that the Native American got their butt toe up. You know what I'm saying? We talk about every, oh, the Native Americans, they, they, they tell us these lies that Thanksgiving is about the Native Americans. You know what I'm saying? That's a, you know, that's a lie that everybody believes. You know what I'm saying? But we believe that lie and we say Thanksgiving is about the Native American. We talk about all the time how, to, how these white folks scanned them and tricked them and tore them up. Well, that don't make no sense then. Because y'all had the dream catchers up. At least when they tore us up and us as slaves, can't nobody say that, you know what I'm saying, you ain't got nothing in the history book saying we were serving Yahuwah and worshiping Yahuwah when that happened. Right? That part is stricken from history. You're never going to see it. But the Most High God ain't about to let that be. Right? That part is stricken from history. But for them, it's not. They was burning, say, all the stuff that y'all do today. Burning darn sage, lighting darn incense, all that stuff to all their little weird guys. And we pick up their stuff and think it's doing something. We burn, say, listen. We burn the darn sage and mix it in the little thing. You know, a little sage, how they be doing. They be mixing this stuff and burn it all over the house. You know what we say we doing? We getting rid of evil spirits. Meanwhile, every ounce of smoke that's lighting is putting another spirit in the house. We been darn hoodwinked. You know what I'm saying? Just believing this stuff, just doing whatever. It's crazy how people will not believe the book. But we'll follow after all this crazy stuff that ain't got no backing. These same people I talk to them be like, nah, man, the book is real. Man, that Bible ain't real. Well, what, what makes you say it ain't real? Because don't nobody want to, ain't nobody going to walk on no water. That's crazy. Oh, okay. But you, you can write, you can light a little crumbled up piece of tobacco and put it inside of a little crusty stone bowl. And all of a sudden that's getting rid of spirit. Like what made you think that? What scientific evidence does somebody bring to you and say, look, this has been proven? Y'all just believe whatever you, that's why y'all got these COVID shots. You believe with everything. Anything these people say, y'all believe. We got to get to the point where if we're going to believe these people, listen, if somebody can just sit here and tell us, they can sit in our face and tell us, hey, you don't need to wear a mask. The doctors need to wear a mask. Then come back a month later and be like, everybody should be wearing a mask. If we can believe that, I'm trying to figure out why we can't sit down and believe what the books say. It's much more believable to me. When I look at the book and I look at all this stuff that be going on in the world, it's much, it is much more believable than believing that a man came from a monkey and that monkey came from a tadpole and that tadpole came from a little algae in the water and that little algae in the water came from a beam of light. Like, to me, when I think about it, I'm looking like, nah, I'm going to roll with the book. Because that sounds crazy to me. Sound crazy to me. I didn't seen a monkey and I didn't seen a man. I ain't never seen the little things that's in the middle of that picture. You know, the picture where you got the little monkey and then right in front of you, you got like a little less of a monkey. Then right in front of you, you got like a taller, a little less of a monkey. Then right in front of you, they racist. So the, right in front of him, they make like a little black man looking monkey. You know what I'm saying? Then in front of him, you got this clean white man in the suit. I'm like, y'all some sick 
These some sick people, bro. They some sick people. They gonna put the little monkey looking black man behind and try to make it look like we the primitive form of white folks. Y'all done lost y'all darn mind. They took it too serious when they said the black man came first. They're like, okay, we gonna show them. Y'all came first, but y'all was the dumb version. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That. Like, Yo, man, he's a sicko even, people. Uh, boy. It's even in their history about how everything they learned, they learned it from like the African nations, the black nations. They learned it from what? Yeah, the, the mathematics and, and everything, you know, culture, history, religion, all that stuff. It ain't hard to prove. Yeah, no. Nah. Where do people get the seven day week from? Every calendar you look at got a week on it. Where it come from? Everything else we can see where it come from. Like you can calculate that's science. You can calculate a, a day. It's like, oh, a day is just, you know, the sun cycle around around the world. You know what I'm saying? Or our cycle around the sun, however they want to look at it. Right? No, That's earth, a day for the them. Earth spinning, the earth spinning, taking one one full circle of the earth is one day. Yeah, yeah, the earth, yeah, the earth is one day. You know what I'm saying? However you want to look at it. Right? You know what I'm saying? You talk about a year. You know what I'm saying? That's just a full cycle around it. You know what I'm saying? That's one year. On the sun, you talk about a month. The month originated from the moon. Right? They would count how many cycles the moon had, and then that's how they tried to come up with a month. You know what I'm saying? You even look at the word month, it comes from the word moon. Right? So you look at all these things, and you see you can tie all that back to science. You don't need God for none of that. Tell them to figure it out for, for a week, a seven day week. What that tie to? Nothing. Nothing. You know what I'm saying? You try to figure that one out. It, these people, Everything they do come from us. You look at their constitution, how they set up their government. All these things came from us. They base it off of the words they use. They base it off their laws. They base it off of the all this stuff is based off of us. In the same way that they stole stuff from our people, who are who 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 we black people. You know what I'm saying? The Israelites that we reading about, that was black people, right? The same way they stole it from those black people and from our black people. Oh, the same thing. They stole from the Egyptians. You know what I'm saying? They stole from the West Africans. They stole from the East Africans. They stole from the Northern Africans, the Moroccans. They stole from all these people. Right? And rightfully so, because that's who they interacted with. And they conquered them. That's how it's supposed to go. Most High God gave it into their hand. But then you can't turn around and look at it and be like, oh, well, they, they was monkeys. That's foul. You know what I'm saying? That's <laughs> you can't do that. You know what I'm saying? You can't. You can't steal my whole game plan, learn from me, beat me up, and then tell everybody, no, nah, I was a primitive monkey. That's crazy. <laughs> at least. You know what I'm saying? Real in that regard. But like, but like, yeah, you know, you know what I'm You already won the fight, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, at, least we're like, at least we're like, yeah, they taught us all this stuff, but we whooped them out and took it. Like, at least yeah. I'd, I'd be cool with that. Yeah, man, I'm telling you. But they, they take that stuff, boy. They take it. You know what I'm saying? They remove it. And God wanted to be that way. Don't get, you know what I'm saying? You always got to look at it from God's point of view and look at it from, you always got to, you got to keep that view of the world. You got to keep God's point of view as he reveals it, right? And you got to keep the view of us. You know what I'm saying? From our point of view, that is foul. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's out of line. From God's point of view, I told y'all stop playing with me. Yeah. Right? From God's point of view, that's a punishment. I told y'all stop playing with me. Yeah, we're still but from our point of view, that thing foul. You said what now? We'll still be walking around here like, man, y'all only got it because God punished us. You know what I'm saying? Like, we still have that arrogant, like, you know, you know, we we the people. Y'all only got it because God punished us. Y'all, like, y'all ain't nothing. You know? we have that I still walk around like that. You know you, you, yeah, but the like, majority yeah. of us don't know who we are. Imagine if yeah. every one of us knew who we are, where we come from. Yeah, buddy. That's exactly that, how we'd be talking to these people. We'd be in their face, too. Uh -huh, yeah, yeah. Don't worry, God. Don't worry, God coming. We'll be back. You know what I'm saying? It's temporary. We'll be back. That's why most of our God don't let us know because he know how we are. Yeah. Super, super stuck up. We are super stuck up people. You know what I'm saying? We think we better than all these folks. You know what I'm saying? And it ooze out of us. Even now, we think we better than them. You know what I'm saying? These people, our people don't even know who we are and we think we better than these people. You know what I'm saying? That's why they work so hard to try to keep us down. They work so hard to, you know, kind of take away our accomplishments. You know what I'm saying? Because, uh, you know what I'm saying? You, you, could, you look at our history. I mean, the whole history of our people is accomplishing things just for our credit to be taken and given to these people. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and the reason why it's like that is to keep us humble. 
because the pride of our heart will rise up. You know what I'm saying? It'll rise up because we already, I mean, just, just in our stuff, just notice how, notice how we are in the stuff that we create. You know what I'm saying? Or the stuff that we think is ours. You know what I'm saying? We, we super snobby, like hip hop. You know what I'm saying? We look at, we look at dancing. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of these things that, that we have, we super snobby with it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we, we think we the best, it. and we think we better with it. Yeah, we don't want nobody to have it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. like we, and and we invite everybody into it, but we snobby about it. We invite Eminem onto it, but we ain't gonna let him be number one now. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> like Eminem, like no, 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 no. You could be like top six. You know what I'm saying? You could be top six rapper. We ain't gonna let you be number one rapper. I don't care how good you rap, boy. You know what I'm saying? Because that's just how we are. Right, we'll let one of y'all in there. It's the same way that everybody else is with their stuff too. But we think we better than everybody when it comes to our stuff. And that's just our that's just natural. That's in our DNA, right? As people, as Hebrews. All right. Most high God gonna reveal this stuff to us and he's gonna send a prophet. I like to believe that he's gonna send uh, Elijah, because the books say Elijah must come first. Right? Elijah, the books say Elijah gonna turn the uh turn the hearts of the children back, I mean the hearts of the yeah, hearts of the children back to the fathers. You know what I'm saying? And vice versa. And so then at that point, we'll know who we are because we'll know her father. Most High God going to use Elijah to show us and be like, okay, you know what I'm saying? Probably, I like to imagine Elijah going to have a notebook, you know what I'm saying? Like a clipboard, you know what I'm saying? A piece of, you know what I'm saying? A pen, piece of paper, you know what I'm saying? He'll be calling us up one by one. Are you, come here. What's your name? You know what I'm saying? Uh, my name is uh, Philip. You know uh, now your name is uh, Jehoiakim and uh, your father was Issachar. All right, well, keep moving. You know what I'm saying? You go line up with the Iskar. You know what I'm saying? And then you just keep going. You know what I'm saying? I like to believe that he just gonna he just gonna show us where we came from and who who are what our lineage is. Yeah. Some of us gonna be told, you know, they'll be looking like uh You're gonna people you argue with him. You know yeah. Yeah. People you know argue with him like no, hey, he's gonna be like, Yeah, now I'm from Judah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, look, you know them G-O-C-C -C boys. Oh man. Go <laughs> sit your butt over they, there. <laughs> listen, they got that thing figured out in their mind. They looking like if you Mexican, you know what I'm saying? You from Gad. You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all are crazy. <laughs> if you Hawaiian, you know what I'm saying? You from uh, you from uh Naphtali, you know what I'm saying? They just be making stuff up. And they got it figured out. You can't tell them nothing about their little charts. You know what I'm saying? They got that thing figured out. You know what I'm saying? Elijah gonna come and be like, uh Mexican gonna walk up to him and be like, nah, uh, you not an Israelite, you but you keep the laws. You can you can go stand next to whoever you want to. That's the rule. You know what I'm saying? But you not an Israelite. Get your butt out of my face. You know what I'm talking about? This butt going to hurt. No, man, I am an Israelite. You know what I'm saying? My leader at GOCC just told me. All right, that's going to be a God going to strike him down just right there. That's how I, I don't know if that's going, but that's how I like to believe it's going to happen. He just go, he you know what I'm saying? Most I got to strike his butt down. He going to have a Gentile He going to have a Gentile section. It's like, oh, you you are the Gentile section. You go over there. Are you? He gonna he gonna do them like that with the Gentile, yeah, all the Gentile yeah. go. Yeah, you know, most I got with segregation. You know what I'm saying? We all right. You know what I'm saying? He gonna line them boys up. Everybody gonna hear it, hear about where they from. They gonna go to their appropriate section, and we gonna head out. That's how that thing's supposed to move. And a lot of us, it's gonna be some black folks that walk up. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Where, uh, what, what, what? Who my father? Like, uh. Well, I ain't more right now, but uh, you know something about you, like, you ain't one of us. You know what I'm saying? I know your skin look like us, but you not one of us. Now you going over there with them Gentiles. You, you in the Assyrian section. Yeah, yeah. You, know you go over there, you you find you a nice little Egyptian going over there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, that's how you know what I'm saying. That's 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 the type of thing that we gotta look forward to. And because we looking forward to those types of things, we gotta keep our mind open. We gotta keep our mind open for how God is gonna play this thing out. And we gotta keep adherence to this book so that we can kind of make sense of what's going on. He's not gonna give you, I tell y'all this all the time, he's not gonna give you understanding if you're not staying obedient. Even the understanding that he do give you gonna be taken away. You know what I'm saying? That's it. We have to we have to keep ourselves obedient. It's getting late in the day, the world is changing. We need to make sure that we steadfast on this word, aggressive too. You know what I'm saying? Aggressive with putting it into practice and making sure that we're doing it. Let's keep going. What else we got? It came to pass as he talked with him that the king said unto him, Art thou made of the king's counsel? Forbear. Why shouldest thou be smitten? Then the prophet forbear and said, 
I know that God has determined to destroy thee because thou hast done this and has not hearkened unto my counsel. Then Amaziah, king of Judah, took advice and sent to Joash, the son of Jehoahash, the son of Jehu, king of Israel, saying, Come, let us see one another in the face. And Joash, king of Israel, sent to Amaziah, king of Judah, saying, the thistle that was in Lebanon sent to the cedar that was in Lebanon, saying, Give thy daughter to my son to wife. And there passed by a, a, a wild beast that was in Lebanon and trolled down the thistle. Thou sayest, Lo, thou hast smitten the Edomites, and thine heart lifted thee up to boast. Abide now at home. Why shouldest thou meddle to thine hurt that thou should fail, even thou and Judah with thee? All right. So in other words, you know what I'm saying? Trash. That boy talking big trash, right? Amaziah, right, was going out to uh to uh Jeho uh Jehoash, right? Here they call him Joash. You know what I'm saying? But he going out to, to Jehoash, the king of Israel, right? And he talked to him and he looking like, yo, let's meet face to face. Let's talk. Right? But Jehoash don't feel too kind about the fact that. You invited us to go to war with you, and all of a sudden you canceled on us. He didn't like that, right? So then he's looking at him. He's looking like, so you think you can come back to me and brag about you killing the Edomites, about you defeating the Edomites? Don't you know that, boy, you just, like when you talk about, when the book talk about Lebanon, it's the place where all the biggest trees, mm -hmm. right? So he's looking like, you just a thistle, like you... You like this little, you know tumbleweed. what I'm saying? You just, yeah, you like a little tumbleweed. tumbleweed. You know what I'm saying? Like a little, the tiniest branch that come off of a, a bush. You know what I'm saying? You think you tough? And you talking, boy, you know who you talking to? You talking to a cedar tree. That's a big old thick, you know what I'm saying? Thick bark on that thing. That thing is a big old trunk. You talking to a big tree is what the king of Israel is saying. So Jehoash is looking like, man, you better run along for you get knocked out, boy. He talking trash to him. He trying to provoke him because he don't feel good. He don't feel like he don't feel like he bad. Like he don't look at Amaziah and be feeling like I should be afraid of him. Right. And then he mad that Amaziah feel like he didn't need him to win this war. And so now he's looking like, oh, if you whooped out the Edomites, that must be easy money. You ain't tough, boy. <laughs> right. So let's see how this thing play out. <laughs> But Amaziah would not hear, for it came of God that he might deliver them into the hand of their enemies because they sought after the gods of Edom. So Joash, the king of Israel, went up and they saw one another in the face, both he and Amaziah, king of Judah, at Beth Shemesh, which belongs mm -hmm. to Judah. And Judah was mm -hmm. put to, to worse before Israel, and they fled every man to his tent. And Joash, the king All of right. Israel... And Joash, the king of Israel, took Amaziah, king of Judah, the son of Joash, the son of Jehoahaz, at Beth Shemesh, and brought him to Jerusalem, and break down the wall of Jerusalem from the gate of Ephraim to the corner gate, 400 cubits. And he took all the gold and the silver and the vessels that were found in the house of God with Obed-Edom, and the treasures of the king's house, and, host and hostages also, and returned to Samaria. And Amaziah, the son of Joash, king of Judah, lived after the death of Joash, the son of Jehoahaz, king of Israel, 15 years. Now the rest of the acts of Amaziah, first and the last, behold, are they not written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel? Now after the time that, after the time that Amaziah did turn away from following the Lord, they made a conspiracy against him in Jerusalem. And he fled to Lachish, but they sent to Lachish after him and slew him there. And they brought him upon horses and buried him with his fathers in the city of Judah. All right. So what you look at there is uh, Amaziah, he ended up getting whooped out. And the, and the book said that the reason why the Most High God let that happen, the reason why he let him ignore and get provoked by Jehoahaz, I mean, Jehoash, is because the Most High God wanted to punish him for bringing them item, idols back from uh, Edom. So then he went up, he fought with him. Now, Jehoash didn't kill him, but he whooped him out. He broke the wall of Jerusalem, you know what I'm saying, or close to Jerusalem, and he ended up taking, uh, taking a bunch of the stuff from, from Jerusalem and from the temple, you know what I'm saying, and then taking that back to Samaria out there with the, with the uh, northern kingdom. 
And after that, eventually, we already read how Jehoash died. Um, so he died. And then we know his son was Jeroboam. But Amaziah continued to live after that. He just, you know, lived with a little more humility after that. You know what I'm saying? Because he got the books that he got put to the worst. You know what I'm saying? That's uh, the way we might say that today. That boy got whooped out. You know what I'm saying? He got toe up. Got embarrassed in front of everybody. But we kind of look at it. What's, uh, is that the end of the chapter? Yeah, that's the end of 25. Uh, start 26 for me. What does it say? And all the people of Judah took Uzziah, who was 16 years old, and made him king in the room of his father, Amaziah. He built Eloth and restored it to Judah after that the king slept with his father. All right. So, yeah, we, we can't write, we can't, we can't go to Uzziah yet. You know what I'm saying? So, we got to talk about, we got to talk about Jeroboam. So, let's, let's, uh, let's jump over to, let's jump over to 2 Kings chapter 14. We got to talk about Jeroboam. 2 Kings chapter 14, verse 23. 2 Kings chapter 14, verse 23. In the fifteenth year of Amaziah, the son of Joash, king of Judah, Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel, began to reign in Samaria and reigned 41 years. Right? So right at the end of Joash came Jeroboam. Right. This is about the same time um, that that we kind of look at uh, 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 the, tr the kingdom transitioning. Right. So now this is an important time frame because we're going to get introduced to a few people. Right. So let's let's take a look at it. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. He departed not from all the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. He restored mm -hmm. the coast of Israel from entering to uh, from the entering of Hamath unto the sea of the plain, according to the word of Yahuwah, God of Israel, which he spake by the hand of his certain Jonah, the son of Amitai. Well, he spake by. So look, he said, Jeroboam didn't depart from any of the sins, right? Books say he didn't depart from any of the sins of the original Jeroboam, right? So this new Jeroboam. Is still doing all the stuff that the original Jeroboam did. And what was the original Jeroboam doing? Remember, he built the altar in Bethel and in Dan. And then he brought out the golden calves, just like the ones that Aaron built for us in the wilderness. He brought out those golden calves and he told people that's how you serve God. So he made idols and he made bad altars. And he told people once a year. Right. He gave us a holiday, uh, 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 essentially a holy day for us to go to these places twice. I mean, once a year and to serve God. And he did that to keep people from going to Jerusalem. So he put a stumbling block in front of the people. What he's saying is he still kept up those same practices. This new Jeroboam still got people serving people. I mean, serving the most high God by bowing down to these golden calves, calling them Yahuwah. Right. So that's a big deal because we're so many generations later. I mean, let's count. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So it's been 13 kings. Right. 13 kings in hundreds of years. And this is still going on. He's still upholding this stuff. That goes to show you how 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 deceived we are like when it comes to sin how committed we'll be to sin you know what i'm saying like it's people like every year you know what i'm saying i got people that come to me and they say i want to read the bible in a year All right i want to read the bible in a year i want to read the bible in a year so i give them reading plans and I always check in with them and kind of see where they at throughout the year and all that and it's so easy to get knocked off track and never get back to reading the bible in a year you know what I'm saying? You be strong the first two months. That third month, it start getting tough. You know what I'm saying? You start having things that suddenly come up. You know what I'm saying? Things that, you know what I'm saying? Well, I got to take care of this first. Oh, my day is just so busy, and then you can't get through it. But, I mean, you smoke weed every single day. You know what I'm saying? You get drunk every single day. You know what I'm saying? You out there chasing that young lady every single day. All right, these things we do faithfully. Faithfully, we chase after this stuff. 
We be up in the casino. We be every week we hitting the bets. But man, I be forgetting to watch Bible study sometimes Friday night. Right? Like this, this is the mindset that we have. The commitment that we make to sin, right? It shows us how deceived we are because we tell ourselves how difficult it is to do something that's, that's actually constructive for us. And sometimes you got to step back and you got to look at it and be like, dang, the devil been working on me. Right? Because how can I say that? How can I say it's difficult for me to do something that benefits me towards the most high God? Yet effortlessly, without thinking, I commit some of these sins that I've been committing for years. Most of us, the first time we tasted alcohol, that thing was disgusting to us. Disgusting. It was difficult to drink. Burn your throat. Made you choke. You almost spit it out. Right? But guess what? You learn how to do it. Right? You learn how to do it. You get pretty darn good at it. But it's like with the book, yeah, it's uncomfortable the first time. Yeah, it's uncomfortable to turn our, turn some of these things off and to, to step away from some of this stuff or to cut certain people off. Yeah, I think it's, it's hard. It's uncomfortable. But we'll learn how to do it. We just got to have the same level of commitment to God, even more so, you know what I'm saying, than what we have to sin and what we've been having for sin. You know what I'm saying? But we can see that's what Jeroboam has done. He's adopted these practices that everybody around him has adopted, and they got it from Jeroboam, the first Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. <laughs> Excuse me, the son of Nebat. They got it from him, and he's continuing these things on. And the book says, started back from the uh, from the beginning of this chapter. Watch, uh, not the beginning, but started back again. Uh, what verse we start off on? It was like 27, 23. 23. Started back in 23. In the 15th year of Amaziah, the son of Joash, king of Judah, Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel, began to reign in Samaria and reigned 41 years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. And he departed but not. The book say he did that which was evil in the sight of Yahuwah. Now watch this. And he departed not from all the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. Mm -hmm. He restored the coast of Israel from, uh, from the entering of Hamath unto the sea of the plain, according to the word of Yahuwah, God of Israel, which he spake by the hand of his servant Jonah, the son of Amitai, right. the prophet, which was in gath Hefer. So he said he restored the coast of Israel. So the book said that although he did what was evil in the sight of Yahuwah, he restored the coast of Israel. Right? And he did that only for one reason. Because he did it by the voice of Yahuwah. So that means the most high God saw fit that this evil king that ain't doing nothing that he want to do, do something that the most high God wanted. And that's because the prophet Jonah came and spoke to him. Now, this Jonah that we talking about is the same Jonah from the book of Jonah. Right. Read it again. What Jonah we talking about? Which he spake by the hand of his servant, Jonah, the son of Amittai, the prophet, which was in Gath Hefer. Right. So now go to the book of Jonah. This is uh, Jonah chapter 1, verse 1. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai. Right? So that's the same one. Jonah, aside the, the, the son of Amittai, spoke to Jeroboam and told Jeroboam, yo, restore the coast of Israel. Then the same uh, Jonah is the same Jonah in the book of Jonah, right? So since Jonah has been introduced, we're not going to read about him today. But next week, we're going to jump into the book of Jonah. And we're going to kind of try to figure out a little bit about who Jonah is. But I want you all to understand why this makes sense before we read Jonah. Because mm -hmm. Jonah is dealing with an evil king. A king that don't do nothing, don't serve God, don't think nothing about God, just do what he want to do. But Jonah was told to tell this king to do something, and we're going to find out the thing that the king did saves Israel. It protects Israel, right? And that might be fine for Jonah, because Jonah, like, man, this is my people. I want to see my people protected. But when we read about Jonah, Jonah going to be asked to do something for somebody who's not his people, right? And it's going to be very interesting why Jonah don't want to do it, okay? So we're going to read about that next week. Before we close out today, are there any questions? I mean...
Sharon, yeah, Sharon, uh, Sharon, Sharon preaching in the chat. He preaching. Mm -hmm. Oh, instant gratification serving the most high. Then gets us comfortable and makes us expect instant gratification. That's a fact. Yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact. That, that's, that's the deception. Deception is um, we think we think we got to get it now. You know what I mean? But uh, nothing that we, nothing that we, nothing that we've been, pro I ain't going to say nothing. Very little that we've been promised from the most high God comes to us in this life. Everything we do is to the death. Right? And we look at Yahushua as an example of that. Yahushua died before he got any glory from God. He didn't get any glory from God until he died. When he, once he died, that's when he was given this new body. You know what I'm saying? Once he died, that's when the people stood around him and was like, surely this was the son of God. You know what I mean? Like, ain't nobody give it up for him until he died. But that's the way. That's how it worked. People beat you down. People, you know what I'm saying? There's everybody against you until you die. What we are doing when we fall to sin is we succumb to what everybody else is doing. That's what we got to, you know what I'm saying? That's what we got to stand alone. You know what I'm saying? You got to stand up against people. And you got to let people know, man, this is, what I, this is what I stand for. I stand for the most high God. And I ain't compromising. I ain't about to sit here and have a long conversation about what, what I think God care about most and trying to make a conversation about how I think I can get as close as possible to sin. No, I want to be the one person to try to get as far away from sin as possible. How about that? How'd that make you feel? Make you feel uncomfortable? Okay, cool. Well, you make me feel uncomfortable too. All right, but that that gotta be our mindset. What else we got in this chat? Okay, wait, what Jonah? But he didn't want to. Okay, can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> no questions. All praises. Same pillow. Next looking sounds exciting. What can you recommend to keep me on track and reading the world? Okay, we'll talk. We'll talk. One thing I can tell y'all, 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 y'all all talk in this chat, right? And I appreciate that because you know, it's it's good for for us to, even though we over the internet, you know what I'm saying? It's good for us to find some way to fellowship and talk to each other. But one thing that'll help y'all with keeping each other on track and keeping yourselves on track is y'all got to talk to each other. And you know what I'm saying? We ain't got to talk to each other just on the Sabbath. You know what I'm saying? Y'all got to talk to each other. You know what I'm saying? Like get on there, figure out a way. I'm I'm trying to work on something on on the Tata Y'all website where everybody can keep in contact or whatever. But you know what I'm saying, figure out a way to get in contact with each other, or let me know and I I talk to each one of y'all. Sister Ruth, I think we had a couple conversations, um, but I think I talked to almost every one of y'all. Um, and if you know, so if y'all can, y'all want me to share y'all information with the other or whatever, just let me know and I can facilitate that. But y'all need to be talking to each other too and holding each other accountable and helping each other out and giving each other pointers and talking about it. And it's going to spark your brain and even new questions going to come up like, oh, OK, well, let's talk to let's talk to Brother T about that or let's talk to Brother Phil about that. So we can we can we can kind of work through it got to be real. You know what I'm saying? What we could, what we do got to be real. If if we if we take this information. And we hold it in our head. The first thing we're going to do, me and, me and Brother T were just talking. How we like, sometimes if, if we not reading all the time or we not in the book all the time, it feel like we forgot stuff. But in reality, we haven't. We haven't really forgot it. It just hasn't been put to use. You know what I'm saying? It's like certain information that we got in our brain. It's just like, I haven't used it in so long. So since I haven't used it, it feel like, you know what I'm saying, it's not there anymore. But in reality, if a situation came up where I got to remember what Moses did on this particular situation, it's going to come right back to me. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's how it play out. Yep, I remember that now, right? And that just come from putting it to use. Well, the same thing is what it, it, it works with, like, uh, well, what we learn from the book in terms of practicality in our lives, right? If we don't have, if we isolate ourselves and we put ourselves in these situations where we don't have to deal with anything or we only dealing with the stuff that we used to dealing with, then... We never get a chance to actually put this stuff in use. You know what I'm saying? So if y'all start talking to each other, then it creates more opportunities for, for, for conversations to come up or discussions to come up about the word. And then as that happens, it gives you more opportunity to see somebody else or hear about somebody else putting it in use. And then you can kind of see, oh, oh yeah, I can apply that to my life too. And we learn from each other and we encourage one another. And in some situations, we're going to be discouraged by one another. We're going to 
be talking to one person and we're going to think, oh, man, I thought so highly of this person. And then they're going to tell you, oh, I messed up and I did this. And that's going to be disappointing. But that's necessary, too. We need all that. We need all that. We need to not make sure we don't exhaust any of, any of us too high and make sure that we not uh we not, you know, bringing ourselves down too low. Right. We balance each other and we help each other out. You know what I'm saying? That's what's necessary. So that's one thing, Sister Sharon. But we'll 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 talk offline, too. And we will we'll kind of get some one on one stuff as well. So I, I'll probably hit you tomorrow. Um, tomorrow morning. Let me see. We got some more questions. What else we got? Um, Zoom. You want to do this on Zoom? I'll pray soon. Right. Don't mean to hold up anyone, but I'm still gonna read daily. Yeah, we'll definitely take care of that. I'm happy to share my info. I appreciate you, Sister Ruth. Yeah, that's yeah, no problem. We can info. get together. We can get together any. We don't. Yeah, like Brother Phil was saying, we don't have to like do it on the Sabbath. Like when we first started reading, this was like an everyday thing. We would come on Saturday, Sunday. We spend every weekend. Like, and sometimes in the middle of the week, if something you know something came up, but yeah, it can be like a. Everyday thing, you know, just let me know. And Sister Sharon said we should do this. Um, do this on Zoom. Um, actually, with this with this little thing that uh that uh brother T is on, you know what I'm saying? Actually, we could we could do this with everybody, you know what I'm saying? I could send everybody a link and everybody can jump on and we could talk and uh, you don't have to turn on your camera if you don't want to, but we can all talk it to be like Zoom. Now, I probably would not just because, you know, personal stuff. So I would not live stream it, but we can set that up. Um, so if y'all y'all all got the Bible study line, just give me a couple times where y'all think, you know, what I'm saying it'd be cool. If y'all want to do it right before study, if y'all want to do it right after study, let me know. Um, and. Yeah, we could we could start doing that. If y'all want to do it on the Sabbath, you know what I'm saying? The Sabbath on the daytime, um, that that's fine too. Um, just let me know a couple times that that'll work for y'all. And uh yeah, we could we could start getting together and we could talk a little bit. And as long as we're not live streaming, we could pray together, we could talk together, we can, you know, give out some personal advice, whatever y'all willing to share. Um, and anything that's like too personal and you don't want to talk about in front of nobody. Just, you know what I'm saying? Hit me on the hit me on the, the Bible study line that's on the screen and uh, we could talk privately as well. And uh, a lot of y'all I've already had these private conversations with, you know, I'm always down to have them. So just reach out. Don't hesitate. I'll make the time. We can figure it out. That's all we got. We all we got. And that's all we got. God is all we got. We got to be, you know what I'm saying? We got to be representation to God while we here. That's the only way we're going to make it through. That's the only way we push through. What else we got? Let's see. Hallelujah. Amen. I would just love to be able to have an open discussion either before or after study. Okay. Midweek manna. I heard that. Sounds great, brother. Brother, thank you. Or set an hour, another day of the week to talk together. Yeah, y'all send me some times. We could do it. It's not that's that's not difficult. That's easy money. Easy, easy money. Easy money, and I love to do it. I love to chase my kids around all the time. So easy. Y'all yeah, can just can't look. Only time y'all can't have a mind, y'all can't have my Thursday after work. You know what I'm saying? That's my haircut time. You know what I'm saying? That's a very important time for me. You know what I'm saying? But after that, you know, the other other than my my time with my barber, you know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm saying? It's all right. My barber, Man. you know what I'm saying? They've been tearing me up out here, bro. I, I wish Freak was out here so bad. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. That's a that's a cold game. Bro, they tear me up, bro. I'm like, man. They messing your hair up? Yeah, bro. Let me see. Let me see. Let's zoom in on Brother T, y'all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let me see. I'm going to zoom him in. Watch this. I'm going to zoom that boy oh, in. Watch man. this. Oh, man. They got you, bro. That's a cold game. Oh. Let me zoom him back out. That's a cold little game. Hell no, they do it. Fellowship hour. That's what we going to call it? Fellowship hour? We can do that, you know what I'm saying? Like the Christian be doing. We play a little music. What you want to play a little? Sharon, you trying to Sharon? Let me find out. You trying to turn me to a Christian? You trying to give me a play? You trying to give me have a choir? Play a little music. We can do fellowship hour. We start out play a little music. Come in, you know what I'm saying? So we, I think I can play music through this thing. So we can play music. I set y'all up. We don't have to. I'll record, but I won't live stream it. And then, um. 
if we have any discussions that we think will be helpful to the people, then I'll talk to everybody and see if everybody is okay with, with, with broadcasting it or cutting it up or making a clip out of it. And then, you know what I'm saying? We can start, we can start getting those out to the people. I think it could be helpful, yeah. but I think, yeah, I think the fellowship is one thing I will say that's missing from what we do. You know what I'm saying? It's that, that, that constant, that, that fellowship, that community. Um, so, uh, yeah, we can, uh, we can definitely do it and we'll call it, we'll call it the Christian name that Sharon came up with. <laughs> our goodness gracious. What y'all trying to do? In this way, this way you can get all your questions out, everything that you've been wondering, stuff that you might not understand about what we be going through. Cause I know y'all probably be having questions and just not want to say nothing cause y'all don't want to hold up the process or, you know, y'all feel like, you know, y'all might be getting in the way of the narrative or whatever, but um yeah, this is way to be necessary to you know to get all of that stuff out oh and now i can come with announcements oh <laughs> you know how to be having it now oh i can't wait so uh i just want to say praise the lord uh want to let y'all know that uh this sabbath uh we are having picnic for jesus <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yo, yo, my man, hey, my, my man's out here be going to every event too, bro. He will be playing around. Yeah, he what ain't never mean, home. You know, I can't catch up with him sometimes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, this is one of my one of my best friends. You know, he Christian out here, man. He, I be trying to get up with him. Y'all say my man got all kind of church events. I'm like, oh, I just catch him later, man. Be Christian, be busy, man. But there you go. You know what I'm saying? Like we commit ourselves, and I ain't gonna say all the stuff that 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 Christian do or sin because that's not true. Yeah, it's not you necessarily bad. Thing. It's just they yeah, don't put many, around many of the things that Christians do are yeah. good things, right? It's not you know what I'm saying. Many of the things that Muslims do, and many of the things that the 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 Jewish people do, they're good things. You know what I'm saying? And and in it of themselves, if all else was equal, they would be righteous. But you know what I'm saying? It's just mixed with a little bit of leaven sometimes, and this spoiled a whole bunch. And so, um, so yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's interesting that we would be committed to so many things. We'd be committed to being busy and committed to all these things. And these things don't necessarily profit us according to life. But yeah, we could fix that. Fellowship hour it is. All of y'all <laughs> fellowship hour. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Sister Pamela said on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, maybe before or after study, we going to figure it out. Y'all going to send me some times. Let me know multiple options. I'm going to look at what everybody got. And then we going we gonna, to uh, we gonna figure it out. Just text it to my line, please. Text it. I'll look at them. We'll set something up. And I'll be in contact with everybody. And we'll figure it out. Because uh, I guess I'm going to need a way. I need a way to let everybody. Well, if we set the time, everybody going to know. Right? So that's fine. If we set the time, everybody going to know. We're going to handle it like that. So fellowship right. hour it is. All right. Let's pray out. I want y'all to pray as well. But I guess if we do, look, if we do fellowship hour after study, we can all pray out together. I just don't like praying on live. But you know what I'm saying? We could probably all pray out together. But uh, but yeah, let's, let's pray out. I love y'all. And uh, we'll see y'all next week. All right, y'all.